Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening sa anlupalup ka man ng mundo. I'm Brother James Nicolas and I would like to welcome you to another serving of our Feast at Home Alabang District Edition. But before we dive into the Word, allow me to share with you another wonderful discovery I had about my wife. Naalala nyo, in one of our previous talk, I discovered something wonderful about Jinky. Na mula nung, nung nag-quarantine from being a hard working engineer, kasi dati, ano yan eh, bahay, opisina, bahay, bahay, opisina, bahay, mall, bahay, mall, yung ganyan. No? Uh, pero nung nag-quarantine, ay, nag-iba siya. Siya ay isa na ring official na plantita. <laughs> Gusto ko i-clear ha? hindi maldita, plantita. <laughs> Bakit? Kasi halos twice in a week, namimili kami ng halaman para sa kanyang garden. At hindi lang yan, because of this newfound joy in her life, natuklasan ko na nakikipag-usap din pala siya sa halaman. Pero alam nyo, lately, may napansin ako, may bago, siyang, may bago siyang ritual sa umaga. Nakikita ko yan na may kinakausap sa langit, dun sa labas, dun sa may bandang garden niya. Alam mo, nasabi ko sa sarili ko, Aba, masyadong nagiging, Masyado nagiging uh, spiritual ang misis ko dahil sa pandemic. May prayer time na doon sa kwarto. Tapos paglabas doon sa garden niya, aba, nakikipag-usap pa kay Lord. Kaya lang maya-maya, narinig ko siya. At ang sabi niya, halika na kayo. Kain na. Yung ganoon, narinig ko. Tapos sabi ko, aba, talagang tinatawag niya yung Holy Trinity. Kasi kayo yung sabi niya. Eh. Pero alam mo, maya-maya nagulat ako. Kasi narinig ko, sabi niya, Wag na kayo matakot. Di ko naman kayo lulutuin. <laughs> At alam mo, dahil doon, dumabas na ako. Kasi iba na to. Baka nagka-nervous breakdown na yung, yung asawa ko dahil sa COVID. Pero alam mo, laking tuwa ko. Dahil paglabas ko, nalaman ko na hindi pala si Lord yung kinakausap niya. Kundi kinakausap niya yung mga ibon doon sa electrical wire kasi gumawa siya ng bird feeder. <laughs> Now, why am I sharing this to you, friend? You know, this morning, I know some of you, you might be worried of the provision you need in your life. Nag-aalala ka kung saan mang gagaling ang anumang pangangailangan mo sa mga darating na araw. So allow me to encourage you today that like those birds who receive their provision through nature or through that of my wife, I believe that you will receive your provision because the God that we worship here at Feast at Home can bless you and provide for you in more ways than one. Yes? And with that in mind, let's declare God's presence and God's goodness in our midst as we all together pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And together, let's declare God's presence as we pray today. I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. You know, for, for eight months now, we've been unboxing Matthew and it's a mind-changing activity. Do you agree? Ang dami niyang binabago dun sa ating mindset. And last week, we talked about worry in Talk 14. And in my story about Jinky's bird feeder, it's part of that talk we had last week. Kaya kung, kung hindi mo napanood yung talk or napakinggan yung talk last week, you can watch our recorded video in your Feast Facebook pages or in your Feast YouTube channel. And But this morning, we'll continue with Talk 15 of our Best Preaching Ever series. And the title of our talk today is I, Problem. 
You know, our key passage is super rich. So let's dive in and allow God to speak to you through His words. Matthew 7, verse 1 to 6, and it says here, Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. For you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of the speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. First, get rid of the log in your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to the pigs. They will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. You know, today, Jesus invites you to stop judging yourself. Stop judging others. Jesus is teaching us not to take God's seat. Don't even borrow His judgment seat because we're a horrible judge. Leave the judging to God. And let God be your judge. Why? Because God, only God, is merciful beyond measure. Let us pray. Can you place your hand over your heart and repeat this prayer after me? Father, I submit myself to you and to your justice and to your mercy. And no one is more merciful. No one is more forgiving than you are. That's why today, I choose not to play God and judge the people around me. And my prayer is that you make me humble, make me compassionate, make me more loving like Jesus. And I pray this, I claim this, in His name, Amen and Amen. Thy word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Let's give God a big hand. Praise Him. For He's worthy to be praised. Before we continue with our talk, allow me to share with you some of our announcement here in Feast at Home. The first one is this. We may not be seeing each other face to face no, because of our situation, because of the COVID-19, but we want to connect with you and pray for you. That's why on your screen will be flashing a Feast at Home Connect link. Now, ano ba yung, yung purpose ng link na yan? First, this is for our first time viewers. If this is your first time to watch Feast at Home, we want to welcome you. Pero kung ikaw naman uh, ay hindi na bago or kahit bago no, and you have prayer requests, here's the second reason why we have the link. So that our intercessory ministry can pray with you. So sulat mo dyan or i-type mo dyan ano yung prayer request mo. And third, if you want to be part of our light group, you can sign up through this link also. Now, madali yung tandaan yung ating, yung ating link. Madaling tandaan. Ano nga ba yung link? Ano nga ba yung link yan? <laughs> na nagbibirula ako. No? It's bit.ly slash feast at home. Okay? So, we want to connect with you. So, please visit that link. Now, here's the second one. Alam nyo ba na may mga YouTube channel ang mga feast natin sa district? Do you know that? Nakasubscribe ka na ba? sa Feast YouTube channel ng Feast mo. If not, then hit the subscribe button to your respective Feast channels because we are now live on YouTube. Okay? So, i-click mo lang yan. So, again, don't forget to hit the bell icon so that we can notify you of any videos uh, or shows that we have in Feast District. And here's the third one. Inabot nyo na ba yung kwento ko kanina? Nandito ko na ba kanina, nakuwento ko about Jinky, the new discoveries I had with her. Akala ko kasi nung una, kilala ko na siya. Pero kahit matagal pala kami mag-asawa, ang dami ko pang pwedeng madiscover tungkol sa kanya. So with that, I would like to invite you to this couple event in our district happening on August 15 at 7.30pm. You know, we, we had 
well, we have this uh, monthly gathering of couples in our dis district and we call this Saturday. And this month, Saturday, on August 15, the topic is Eyes of the Heart, Rediscovering Your Spouse in the New Normal. And we have a special guest. Alam kung sino? No other than Brother Bo Sanchez. So if you want to join us, please register at the link on your screen. Medyo limited yung slots. And we're going to do a first register and first serve basis. Okay, so mag-register na kayo. And this event, libre. Okay, so kaya mag-register na kayo, mag-unahan na kayo kasi medyo limited yung ating slot. And fourth, to all our online viewers and, and online ministers, you are invited to join the Feast, Worship, and Creative Conference. Siguro nagtatanong iba, ano ba yan, ano ba yan Brother James? Ano ba yan, creative ano ministry na yan? No? Or, or conference na yan? You know, this is a month-long series of online workshops that will tackle some of the most pressing and relevant topics of online ministry during these times. Now, Ito may bayad, no? dahil kasi yung gagaling ho ng mga speakers dito. Okay? And this is something helpful uh, if you are doing an online ministry. The conference fee is 450 for basic access. And that access, you can watch all session live as it happened. Na kung busy ka naman at gusto mong mapanood some other time kasi busy ka dun sa trabaho mo, then you can register for the premium access for only 700 pesos. Murang-mura lang yan. No? At uh, ang maganda rito sa premium access is that you can watch all the session live and on demand up to the end of September 2020. Okay? So, again, register and get your tickets in the link or using the link on your screen. And here's the last announcement. And, you know, yesterday, I was... Uh, talking to this uh, wonderful lady. Ito ay attendee ng Feast South Mall. Ang tawag namin sa kanya, si Tita Tess. Kasi everyone tumatawag sa akin yan at kay Jinky just to report na nagbigay na siya nung kanyang tights and offering. At alam mo, tuwan-tuwa ako dyan. Kasi talaga every month walang palya. Sabi ko nga sa kanya, alam mo, Tita Tess, talo mo pa kami, mas updated ka pa sa amin. And then one day, I, I asked her, sabi ko, why are you continuously giving your, your tithes, your, your I give offering. Alam mo ang sabi lang niya? Sabi niya kasi, Brother James, that's my way of thanking God for the many blessings in my life. Friends, I know you want to do the same. Kaya dito sa feast at home, pinadali natin yung process na yan. So you can send your tithes or your love offering in three ways. You can give your tithes or offering through our credit card or PayPal or through bank deposits, or GCash, or online transfer. And again, you can see the instruction flashed on your screen. So in behalf of our district builder, Brother Arun, and, and my brother builders, allow me to thank you in advance. And we believe that whatever you give here at the feast, God will return it to you in more ways than one. Kaya maraming maraming salamat. So are you ready for God's word for you? Ready ka na ba? Tanongin mo ako may katabi ka. Ready ka na ba? Today I want to preach a simple message. Be the feast. Be the feast. What do you think Jesus really mean when he said in Matthew 7 verse 1, Do not judge others. Do not judge others. You know, judge is a strong Greek or in strong Greek, is krinyo. And it means three things. Tatlong, tatlong ibig sabihin niyan. Number one, to decide between two things. Yung halimbawa, uwi ka ng bahay, tapos pagdating mo sa bahay, tanong, tinanong mo nanay mo, maanong ulam? Tapos sabi na nanay mo, anak, mamili ka na dyan sa, sa kusina. Tapos pagbukas mo, nakita mo, isa lang yung ulam. Tapos nasabi mo, ma, anong pagpipilian ko dito? Ito yung ulam naman ito. Tapos nasabi ng nanay mo, anak, pumili ka na kung kakain ka o hindi. <laughs> so, yun ang sabihin. It's about making choice. Or, krinyo could also mean the role of the judge. Alam mo, uh, because bata pa lang ako, kumakanta na ako, kaya yung mga tao nakaranig ng kanta ko, every time they will invite me to a party, they will ask me to judge 
their singing contest kasi pag mga Christmas party, di ba yan? Yung talagang, talagang kasama nung, nung party. So, kinuha, kinukuha akong judge. And to tell you honestly, I'm not a good judge pag, pag mga ganyang singing contest. Bakit? Kasi pag yung kumakanta, kinakanta niya, uh, humanap ka ng pangit, pero kahit malagari ba yung, yung boses niya, mababang grade sa akin yan. Pero... Ang score, kahit boses yo yoy bilya may kumanta, basta yung kanta, yung mga kanta ni Tom Jones or ni Elvis, ayan, mataas ang grades niyan. Bakit? Kasi yan yung genre ko eh. Kaya pag hini-invite ako, sinasabi ko sa kanila, wag na, wag na. Bakit, Brother James? Wag na kasi sabi ni Jesus in Matthew, do not judge. Do not judge. But was this what Jesus meant? Yan ba ibig sabihin ni Jesus? Alam mo kung yan ibig sabihin ni Jesus, kawawa naman si Simon Cowell or yung mga Supreme Court justices natin kung yan ang ibig niya sabihin. So anong ibig sabihin ni Jesus when he said, do not judge? You know, I believe ito yung gusto niyang sabihin, which is the third meaning of krinyo. Don't be judgmental. You know, Jesus warned us that when we become judgmental, we condemn others and therefore we condemn ourselves. That's why you will see in the following verse, in verse 2, it says here, For you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. So, sa madaling salita, parang sinasabi ni Jesus that if you become judgmental, we become our own judge. Pero atin-atin lang ito ha. Huwag niyo ko i-chismis. I really don't, don't like to be a judge. Ay, ayoko. Bakit? Kasi kilala ko yung sarili ko. I'm a very bad judge. Yung liba, may lalapit sa akin tapos magpa-pray over. Yung brother James, pag-pray mo naman ako because I, I had this uh, skin d- disease. Tapos pag nakita ko yung mama, yung alam mo yun, o yung nagpapapray over, nakabihis, mukhang mayaman. No? Pero pinapray ko yan, kailangan English. So, pinapray ko, Lord, please remove his skin allergy. Yung ganyan. Tapos may lalapit sa akin, magpapapray din, pero medyo hindi mukhang mayaman, hindi mukhang hindi masyado maayos yung damit. Yung pagpray over ko yun, Lord, tanggalin mo yung kanyang hadhad. <laughs> no? Okay, may magpapapray. No, Brother James, pagpray mo naman ako. That, grabe yung anxiety ko. So, pagpapray ko, Lord, free him from his nervous breakdown. Bakit? Kasi may, medyo maayos yung damit. No? Medyo mukhang, mukhang mayaman. Pero pag hindi, Lord, pagalingin mo yung topak niya. <laughs> Ganyan ako before. That's why I do not want to be a judge. Again, I'm not a good judge. Bakit? Kasi... Kahit minsan sa, sa sarili ko, I'm, I'm a worst critic. I'm a worst critic. And aren't we our own worst critic at times? Yung we judge ourselves cruelly. Pag, alam mo, pag binabasa ko yung mga prayer requests natin sa peace, nagugulat ako in the level of hatred some others have against themselves. Merong iba, talagang hindi nila gusto yung sarili nila. You know, I, I remember the story. Merong isang babae dumadaan dun sa sa isang animal store. Na isang uh, bilihan ng mga hayop. Uh, bilihan ng mga hayop. So, dumadaan siya dun. Tapos pagdaan niya, merong isang parot dun na, na tinatawag siya. Uh, ale, ale. Siya siya matitingin. Bakit? Taba-taba mo. Taba-taba mo. Yung ganyan. Tapos itong ali, medyo may inis, magagalit. So, aalis. Tapos everyday da- dadaan siya doon. Tinatawag siya, ali, ali. Taba-taba mo, taba-taba mo. Ganyan. Tapos one time, di na siya nakapigil, nag-aalit na siya. Nung pagdaan niya, sabi sa kanya, ali, ali. Taba-taba mo, taba-taba mo. Alam mo, ginawa nung ali, pumasok doon sa tindahan. At ang sabi niya doon sa, sa may-ari, sabi niya, sabihan mo yung, yung parot mo kasi sa susunod na marinig ko pa yung parot mo. Na sabihin, mataba ako. Ipiprito ko yan. At narinig din ng parot. Now, the following day, dumaan na ulit siya. Pagdaan niya, tinawag na naman siya ng parot. Sabi sa kanya, ale, ale. Tinig na niya, sabi. Ano? Alam mo na yun. <laughs> Now, friends, why am I sharing these stories to you? Many of us, we have an inner parrot. 
that tells us every day you are ugly. And we carry this parrot within us wherever we go. We actually don't need the devil anymore to accuse us because we, we do it ourselves. At yung iba, yung inner judges nila, medyo workaholic. Over time sa pagre-remind sa kanila ng kahinaan nila at ng pagkakamali nila sa buhay. That's why you need to ask yourself, am I ashamed of who I am? Now take note of this, we should be ashamed of our sins because that's the job of our conscience. But we should never be ashamed of who we are because that's toxic. So friends, shame, remember this is a cancer of our soul. And what is shame? The painful feeling of unworthiness. Now, why am, I, why am I asking you to ask yourself about this? Because if we judge ourselves, we become judgmental towards others too. So, what kailangan natin gawin? What should we do then? Simply lang. Fire your inner judge. Let God, let God be your only judge. And I repeat what I said earlier. Jesus is telling you today, stop judging yourself. Stop judging others. Don't take God's seat. We're a horrible judge. Leave the judging to God and let God be your judge. Why? Because God is merciful beyond measure. Yes. Kaya kung may kasama ka, tapikin, tapikin mo nga yan, sabihin mo nga sa kanya, God is merciful beyond measure. Now, to continue, giving hope to you, let my brother builders preach more of God's message for you today. Let's listen to, to God's word to them. Let God be your judge. If you notice, all throughout the Gospels, we can see Jesus as a merciful judge, especially to the worst possible sinners. Merong mga ilang kwento makikita natin yung tunay na puso ni Jesus. For example, merong story wherein there are a bunch of religious guys. Meron silang nahuling babae caught in the, in the act of adultery. And they brought her in front of Jesus, telling Jesus, Jesus, what do you say? According to the Mosaic Law, we should stone her. Kailangan natin batuhin ng bato. Anong gagawin natin? And you know what? Instead of Jesus telling them to, Oo nga, sige, batuhin nyo na yan. What did Jesus do? Instead, Jesus told them to look at their own sins. At sabi ni Jesus, Kung sino ang walang kasalanan, siya ang unang bumato. And true enough, walang bumato. What a merciful God we have. And then later on, we will see Jesus meeting a Samaritan woman at the well. At itong Samaritan woman na ito, hindi lang basta-basta. Bakit? Meron siyang limang asawa. At alam mo, itong si Jesus, inbis na makita niya yung kasalanan nitong babae na to, Jesus looked at this woman with love. Jesus looked at this woman as she is, a person with dignity. Eh sa akin, siguro kung sa atin nangyari ngayon at nakita natin ang Samaritan woman na yan, ano kayang gagawin natin? Ano kayang sasabihin natin? Ito, feeling ko, ganito lang gagawin natin. Eh. Pag nakita natin ngayon, especially nowadays, uso yung mga ganyan eh. Pag nakita natin sa Samaritan woman, daming asawa, siguro ganito ginawa natin. Te. Ang kate. Yung ganyan. Diba? In fact, nowadays, ang daming taong tuwang-tuwa sila. Kapag nakakakita sila ng babae, ng kabet, na sinugod ng original na asawa at ginugol pin ng original na asawa sa social media. At pag tinignan mo sa comment section, ay nako, grabe. Yung mga tao talaga, yan, buti nga sa'yo. Buti nga sa'yo. Buti nga, binuhay ka pa. Kung sa akin yan, patay ka talaga. Grabe, ang harsh. Why? Because we love looking at the other person according to their sins. Pero sa kaso ni Jesus, hindi. Tinitingnan niya yung tao beyond dun sa kasalanan niya. Jesus is so merciful, especially to the worst sinners. One time may lumapit sa akin at tinatanong sa akin, Brother, bakit nga ba the feast ang tawag sa atin? And I just tell them, alam mo, kasi we're trying to imitate Jesus who loved throwing feasts, who loved throwing parties of forgiveness and meals of mercy for, for sinners, for tax collectors, for prostitutes. 
Because I believe these meals of mercy are the essence of the kingdom of God. Katulad nga ng sinabi ni Pope Francis, the name of God is mercy. And that's what we are trying to do. We are trying to accept everyone. Kaya dito sa feast, welcome lahat eh. Lahat ng klase ng makakasalan ng tao nandito. In fact, atin-atin na lang ha. May chichismis ako sa inyo. Meron isang preacher dito. Grabe, sobrang makasalanan. Dating sugarol. Itago na lang natin siya sa pangalang Velden Lim. <laughs> ako pala yun. <laughs> Ayan, biro lang. But you see, yun eh. Even the preacher is a, 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 a grave sinner. Pero alam nyo, by God's grace, dahil dito sa feast, unti-unti tayong binabago ng mercy ng Diyos. At ginagamit pa nga yung mga makakasalanan na tao na yan para ipalaganap ang kanyang pagmamahal sa buong mundo. That's why, my dear friends, I encourage you to keep on attending the feast, especially feast at home. Kasi dito tayo unti-unti babaguhin ni Lord, especially when we hear the word of God. And as we hear the word of God, as we receive God's mercy, doon tayo babaguhin ni Lord. Pero ito ang gusto ko sabihin sa inyo. Sana, huwag tayong titigil doon. Because I believe in this, God does not want you to only attend the feast. God calls you to be the feast. Lumabas ka. God wants you to keep throwing parties of forgiveness where sinners receive His mercy. Yun ang Diyos eh. Kasi, ang Diyos, gusto niya tayo ay mabago para yakagin natin yung mga makakasalanan. Kaya hindi ninyo napansin, alam nyo, Jesus was totally gentle to public sinners. However, Jesus was very hard, ay triggered siya sa mga taong ito, in one specific group of sinners. Dito siya galit na galit. Sa mga sinners who are extremely judgmental religious people. Ito yung mga taong, they love taking God's seed and love act, loves to act like judges. That's why in our passage today, Jesus told us in Matthew 7, 1 to 6, it says here in Matthew 7, verse 3, And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can see past the log in your own eye. Ayan yung sinasabi ni Jesus. Are you judgmental? Jesus is telling us, you have an eye problem. You have a log sticking out of your eye. And what's worse is this, hindi mo nakikita. And to remove that log, merong recommendation si Jesus sa atin. Jesus wants us to assume two radical things. Ano yung dalawang bagay na yan? The first assumption is this, you need to assume that your eyesight is defective. Kailangan mong aminin na malabo at palpak yung paningin mo. And if you have an eye problem, you need to leave the judging in God's hands. Ang problema ito, ang feeling natin ang linaw-linaw ng mata natin. Feeling natin 2020. Feeling natin alam na natin ang lahat. Feeling natin kilala natin ang lahat ng hilatsa at lahat ng klase ng tao na makakasalamuha natin. Kaya pag meron tayong nakitang tao at parang meron pinapakitang kasamaan, anong sasabihin mo? Ay! Alam ko na yan. Yung mga ganyang stilo, mga ganyang tipo, kilala ko na yan. Ayan. Ang bilis natin mag- Husga. Kasi feeling natin, magaling tayo bumasa ng tao. And because of that, that's the beginning of us becoming judgmental. But in reality, the truth is that we can only see maybe at best 1% of reality. Why? Papalpak talaga yung paningin natin. Why? Because first and foremost, we are human. Magkakamalit, magkakamali tayo. At pangalawa, at ito mas importante, Magkakamali tayo, why? Because there's a giant log sticking out of our eye which represents our sins. More on this later, kaya tayo nagkakamali sa pagjudjudge. Naalala ko tong storya na ito. Ewan ko kung umuorder kayo sa fast food, pero ako, kapag umuorder ako sa fast food, dahil nga fast food, ina-expect mo na fast, na mabilis. And pinaka kinainisan ko, Da, yung sobrang bagal na service. Bakit? Dati ako nagtrabaho sa isang fast food chain. Naging manager ako noon. So, alam ko yung intricacies kung bakit bumabagal at bakit bumibili saan may problema. And then one time, umorder ako sa fast food ang haba ng pila. Sobrang haba ng pila. Sobrang bagal lang service. At nung nakikita ko, ang problema nandun sa cashier. 
So, tinitingan ko yung cashier, parang ang wala sa sarili. Parang palpak talaga. Mali-mali yung order, paulit-ulit, pa-void ng pa-void dun sa manager. And so, ako inis na inis ako sa loob-loob ko. Bad trip naman to, nakakainis. Pero buti na lang, merong isang babae dun, siya yung nag-vent out nung nasa isip ko, yung reklamo niya. In fact, nagalit siya mismo dun sa crew. Sabi niya dun sa crew, ikaw naman, ilang beses mo nang tinanong kung ano yung order ko. Tapos sabay, mali-mali naman pala yung dadating na order sa akin. Kanina ka ba eh, nananadya ka yata. Ako naman sa likod, oo nga, oo nga, ang bagal nga, oo nga, hindi nga siya nakikinig. Ang dami kong ganun sa, at the back of my mind. And maya-maya itong babaeng ito, alam niyo yung crew, umiyak bigla, umiiyak. Tapos sabi ng manager, tabi ka na nga dyan akong tatapos nung, nung, nung transaction. So tinapos niya, eh ako na yung next in line. Pagdating ng manager, sabi sa akin ng manager, dun, nung ako na yung nasa pila, sabi sa akin, Sir, pasensya na po kayo, ang tagal na. Ang sabi ko sa kanya, oo nga, ang tagal nga, mali nga eh, ganyan. And you know what? Anong sabi ng manager? Sabi niya, pasensya na po kayo ha. Medyo wala lang po sa sarili yung crew kasi kanina. Kasi may pinagdadaanan po. Nalaman niya na yung nanay niya na nasa abroad, namatay kanina-kanina lang. At alam niyo sinabi niya nun? Sinabi niya yun? Alam niyo? Doon ako natigilan at natauhan. And ako, parang nahiya ako. Bakit? Kasi feeling nagre-reklamo ako. Yung pala may pinagdadaanan. Why am I sharing this to you? I believe the key to not being judgmental is this. When you are tempted to label people as bad, I want you to assume that your viewpoint is very limited. Hindi mo alam talaga kung ano yung nangyayari, yung buong picture. And I remember this quote from Brad Meltzer. Ang ganda ng sinabi niya. Sabi niya, Everyone you meet is fighting a battle you know nothing about. Be kind always. Lahat tayo may kanya-kanyang pinagdadaanan, may kanya-kanyang hugot. And I believe in this. There's a lot of pain in our world today. So much suffering, rejection, hurt, condemnation, criticism, and slander. You have a choice. You have a choice. Ano ang choice mo? You can add to that pain or you can remove a bit of that pain. How? By being merciful, by comforting, by embracing, by forgiving. By being merciful. Yes, assume that your eyesight is defective. The second thing that you need to assume is this. You need to assume that your sin is bigger than the one you are judging. Alam nyo, ito ang problema natin eh. When we see someone sinning, we are always tempted to say, hmm, sigurado ako, mas maliit yung kasalanan ko kesa dyan sa taong yan. Grabe naman yung pagkakasala niya. But that's the point of Jesus. A log is bigger than a speck. And if you don't see your own log, that's why, and if you don't see your own, and you don't see your own log, that's why you, all you see is your brother's speck. Naalala ko tong story na ito. Um, one time, sumakay ako ng aeroplano. I was giving a talk in Cebu or Davao, I think. And then, nung paakit na ako, nung aeroplano, syempre titinan ko yung ticket ko eh. Tapos chinek ko, saan kaya yung seat ko? Ang favorite seat, seat ko kasi sa aeroplano is yung aisle. Kasi malaking tao ako, gusto ko maluwag, tapos madali makapag-CR. Yung ibang tao, mahilig sa window seat. E type nyo nga dyan, anong mas gusto nyo? Aisle seat or window seat? Ako kasi aisle seat. So ako, aisle seat talagang gusto ko. Nung nakita ko yung, yung, yung ticket ko, nakalagay doon, 18F. Sabi ko, uy, nako malamang, aisle seat ito. Excited daw, sabi ko, yes, aisle seat. So, pumunta ako doon, eto na, pasakay na ako. Pagdating ko doon sa 18F, doon sa row na yon row number 18, merong babae na nakaupo doon sa aisle seat. Tiningnan ko yung ticket ko. Tiningnan ko yung label. Tiningnan ko yung ticket ko. Tiningnan ko yung label. Ang sabi ko sa kanya, Ma'am, baka pwede po kayong umusog. Diyan po yung seat ko. Doon po kayo sa window. Letter D po kayo, di ba? Doon kayo sa window. So, alam nyo, ang reaksyon ng babae, maayos kong sinabi, ha? Ang sabi ng babae sa akin, tinignan ako ng masama. Sabi niya, ha? Sabi ko, ayan po, oh. Doon po kayo sa window. So, nakakunot yung mata, mo, noo niya, tapos galit siya, pero lumipat naman. Thank you, Lord. So, 
Nung tago po ko sa loob-loob ko itong alin na ito? Grabe naman. Sa, ito yung inner thought ko ha, sa loob-loob ko. Hmm? Kakainis naman tong alin na ito. Galit pa. Pero ako talaga, I was holding my anger and my inis. At sinasabi ko sa sarili ko, okay lang. Huwag ka na mainis, Velden. Di ba turo sa feast? Be the bigger person. So ako, be the bigger person. Be the bigger person. Pero alam nyo, all throughout that one hour to one and a half hours na ride, nasa isip po na kainis to siya pa yung nagalit siya na nga yung mali eh. Ayan, eto na. So nung pagtayo, pagtayo, eto na. Tapos na, ma, uh, nakaland na kami dun sa pupuntahan namin. Eto na, kukunin ko na yung bag ko. Pagtayo ko, alam nyo, chinek ko ulit yung, yung label nung seat. Pagkakita ko, alam nyo, baligtad pala ako. Yung F pala ang dapat nandun sa window seat at ako pala yung dapat nasa window seat at yung babae pala yung dapat nasa aisle kasi siya yung letter D. Alam nyo, nung nakita ko yun, alam nyo, ako talaga parang gusto kong lamunin ng lupa. Lord, take me, take me here. Yung ganun. Nahiyang-hiya ako. Bakit? Kasi all those times, yung one and a half hours na yun, Naiinis ako sa katabi ko, thinking na mali siya. Yung pala, siya pa pala yung nagbigay. Siya pa pala yung nagparaya. What am I trying to point out, my dear friends? Buong akala ko, siya ang may kasalanan. Hinusgahan ko na agad. Why? Because I was blinded by my own log, by my own sin of self-entitlement, of selfishness, because I was so engrossed with that aisle seat. At ang ending, nang husga na ako, nagkamali pa ako. And you see, my dear friends, naalala ko tuloy sa story ako, yung story sa Bible na ano, there is wherein Jesus told the parable of the Pharisee and the publican praying in the temple. Tapos sabi nung pariseyo dun sa, sa, dun sa nakikita niya na nagdarasal na publican, sabi nung Pharisee, I thank you God that I'm not like other people, cheaters, sinners, adulterers. I'm certainly not like that tax collector, that publican. And parang ganun yung experience ko. And yet, at the end of that story, Jesus told that that sinner went home. Umuwi siya, a right with God. While the religious guy, the Pharisee, who prayed every day, read the Bible every day, fasted twice a week, went home with a broken relationship with God. That's why, my dear friends, today I'd like you to ask yourself this question. Rather, every day, ask yourself this question. Am I acting like a modern Pharisee? Modern Pharisee. Alam nyo, sa United States, sa America, a huge survey was conducted among young people ages 16 to 29. And they were asked what they thought of Christianity. And here's the shocking results of those survey. Ang sabi doon, 87% said Christians were judgmental. They thought 85% of them told that Christians were hypo hypocritical. And I don't blame them. Ganyan minsan tayo, di ba? Ang dali natin manghusga. At, at higit sa lahat, nang husga na nga tayo, hindi pa rin tayo naman malinis kasi makasalanan pa rin tayo. Kaya nga, ang ganda ng pagkakasabi nito ni Rick Warren. Rick Warren said this, Christians are more known for what they are against than what we are for. Ang dami nating hanash, ang dami nating kalaban, ang dami nating pinaglalaban. Pero, hindi klaro sa iba what we are for. Para saan nga ba tayo? We are for God's love, for God's mercy, for the salvation of the world. Ang problema ito, we love attacking people. Ang dami natin masyadong pinaglalaban. Ang tanong ko sa inyo ito, do you love telling people what's wrong with them? Because that's what we like to do. We do that to our kids. We do that to our spouses. We do that to our unchurched friends. Sa social media, ang bilis-bilis natin punahin yung mga post ng iba. For example, ang bilis natin punahin yung nagpo-post ng mamahaling bike. Tapos, may pupo na dun sa pagpuna sa pagpo-post ng mamahaling bike. Tapos ngayon, may preacher na pumupuna sa pagpuna, sa pagpuna, sa bike. 
at ito ang matindi. At higit sa lahat, heto kayo ngayon, ginajudge rin ako, at sinasabi, tingnan nyo nga itong preacher na ito, ginajudge din yung mga namumuna sa social media. Yan tayo eh. We love telling people what's wrong with them. And you see, if you're a religious person, people know what you are against. Pero itong tanong, but are you known for your kindness? And whether you admit it or not, minsan hindi. Because whether you admit it or not, we are all judgmental and hypocrites in our own ways. Kaya nga ang suggestion ni Jesus ito eh. Anong sinabi niya? Matthew 7 verse 5. Sabi niya, hypocrite. First, get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. May kasabihan nga, ang magnanakaw galit sa kapwa magnanakaw. Ang sinungaling galit sa kapwa sinungaling. Ang tamad galit sa kapwa tamad. Anong punto? Napakadaling punahin ang mali ng iba. But before we do that, Jesus is telling us, you need to examine yourself first. Kasi baka yung kinaiinisan mo is just a reflection ng kinaiinisan mo sa sarili mo. You need to discern. What is the log, that sin that you should get out of your system? Take it out because if you really love yourself, you will get rid of the sin that's destroying you. And maybe that sin is the sin of judge, judging and being judgmental. Tandaan, bago punahin ang iba, unahin muna ang sarili. Don't judge too quickly. Kasi kapag nagmamalinis, mas nakakainis. And I believe in this. More than aiming to live a religious life and a righteous life, aim to live a merciful life. Because, because that's how Jesus lived. That's who Jesus is. His name is is mercy. Five practical strategies on how to stop being judgmental. You know, following Jesus will require an eye transplant. Yes, papalitan ni Lord ang mga mata natin because we need to see people the way God sees people. And here are five things you should do if you want to quit being judgmental. Number one, always know their back story. May kwento ang mga buhay ng tao. May kwento sila. May pinanggagalingan sila. Kailangan malaman mo yon. Pag alam mo yung tunay na kwento, magbabago ang pananaw mo sa kanila. Isang araw, ang best friend ko si Bill, Bill Gates, na <laughs> kumain sa restaurant. Pagkatapos sa kumain, nagbigay siya ng tip. Five dollars lang. Yung waiter nagulat. Sabi niya, <laughs> tapos napansin niya, nagulat. Sabi niya, An anong problema? Nagtagalog si Bill Gates, ha? Grabe. <laughs> anong problema? Sabi ni Bill, ni, nung, nung waiter, ah, Sir, kagabi po yung anak niyo, kumain dito. Ang tip po niya, $500. Tapos kayo, $5 lang. Kayo si Bill Gates. Sabi niya ni Bill Gates, ang iti siya. <laughs> well, kasi yung tatay niya, bilyonaryo. Yung tatay ko, magsasaka. <laughs> May backstory. We think we already know everything we need to know about the other person. That is why we judge them immediately. We label them already. You know, once you sense judgmental thoughts in your mind about someone, please ask yourself, have I actually listened enough to that person? Do I know his, her backstory? Second is this, always walk in their shoes. Alam niyo, part of listening is to take on the other person's perspective. It means, first, removing your shoes. Second, wearing their shoes. Third, walking a mile in their shoes. You know, it is hard to do this because we believe that our perspective is the only correct perspective. Not knowing that there are million perspectives, sorry, there are billion Sorry, sorry. There are trillion, no, there are centillion perspectives out there. Hindi lang isa ang sagot dyan. Hindi lang isa ang tamang pananaw dyan. And most of the time, we believe our perspective is equal to reality. Isang araw, muwi yung anak, hating gabi na. Nako, sinalubong siya ng galit na galit na tatay. At sabi nung tatay, Hoy, magaling kang bata ka, ba't ngayon ka lang umuwi? Sabi nung anak, Daddy, not now. I am so tired. Pagod po ako. Ang dami kong ginawa sa school. Dami kong research. Ang dami kong projects. 
May thesis pa ako. Nagka-meeting pa ako with the dean. Sabi nung tatay, tigil-tigil mo ako, grade 5 ka pa lang, din-din ka dyan. <laughs> Meron silang perspective. Puntahan mo ano ang perspektibo nila para maintindihan mo. Number three, please stop using labels. Ha? Tayong mga judgmental people, ganyan. Palagi na, aminin nyo na, tayo yan. Ang tingin natin, black and white. Anti or pro. di ba? Lasal at tineo. Yan lang ang tingin natin. Kahit sa iba kang school nag-aaral. Diba? Yan lang eh. But between white and black, we all fall into a million shades of gray. Plus all the zillion of shades and the colors. Color wheel ba tawag na? Basta ang daming kulay. Spell nyo nga. Tangerine. Oh, sige nga. Mulberry. Magenta. Kung ano, hindi natin ma-spell. Kaya black and white na lang. Please stop labeling and start loving. You know, labeling means forever seeing people only according to their past. But love sees people according to their potential. My good friend Johann Wolfgang van Goethe said, If we treat people as they are, we make them worse. If we treat people as they ought to be, we help them become what they are capable of becoming. Number four, please look for subconscious biases. You have to be honest. You have biases. You may say, wala akong bias. Tanggap ko lahat. Kaya sinabi ko subconscious eh. Anong ibig sabihin? You are not even aware that you have them. You know, biases are like having psychological cataracts. Yung ang tingin mo, yung, yung psychological cataract, meron kang cloudy film sa mata mo, so ang tingin mo blurry ang lahat. Pero, Akala mo clear. Yan ang psychological cataract. That is why I encourage you, you must constantly ask yourself, what are my biases? Oh, tanungin niyo ang sarili niyo. Pag tumingin ka sa Chinese, anong tingin mo? Pag tumingin ka sa Bombay, anong tingin mo? Naalala ko no, nung maliit pa ako, yung kapitbahay ko, pinapagalitan ako, ginagamit nila ang Bombay panakot sa bata. So tinakot ako. Sabi niya, tumigil ka, magulok ang bata. Isusumbong kita sa Bombay. Alam mo, sagot ko, hindi ako tako. Tatay ko, Bombay. Anong tingin mo sa mga Muslim? How do you view Cebuanos, Ilocanos, Tagalogs? How do you view a politician? How do I? I need to ask that as well. How do I view Athenians? Oh, nag-blow ako ngayon. Diba? May biases tayo. Kaya pag honest ka dyan, magiging maingat ka. Number five, please love with prudence. God calls us to love everyone, even people who do bad things. Yes! But how should you love them? This requires prudence. You know, after Jesus telling us, do not judge, He said in Matthew 7, Do not waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. If you look at it, parang kinontra niya yung mga sinabi niya. Pero ito talaga yung gustong sabihin ni Jesus. Do not be judgmental. Yeah, do not. But do not also be naive. Do not condemn people, but love them with prudence. Example, isipin niyo ito. Naglalakad kayo isang araw. Tapos, may nakasalubong ka, lumapit sa'yo. Kawawa ang itsura. Sabi niya niyan, Sir, ang nanay ko po may sakit, nasa ospital, kailangan po niya ng gamot. Wala ako akong pera, pero meron po akong Rolex. Gusto kong ibenta sa inyo. Ito pong Rolex na to, 100,000 to. Totoo po ito. Hindi ako naglolo ko, 100,000 po ito. Bibenta ko na lang ng 3,000. Makabili lang ako ng gamot ng, ng, ng nanay ko. Ito po yung reseta niya. Ito, nagpakita. So, ikaw naman, dahil naawa ka, tapos siyempre gusto mo rin magka-Rolex. For pagkakataon na, 100,000 na Rolex. 3,000 mo lang bib- binigyan mo. Tapos yung lalaki, tuwan-tuwa. Tapos umalis, saya niya. So, hawak mo yung Rolex. Tiningnan mo. Tapos sabi mo, para madumi. Palinis ko kaya. So pumunta ka sa watch store. Tapos yung watch doctor, tiningnan niya yung Rolex mo. Tapos umiling. Sabi niya ganyan, sorry sir, I do not clean fake watches. Nagulat ka sa'yo mo, uy, 
Rolex yan. Tingnan mo. Hindi yan fake. Sabi niya ganyan, Sir, basahin niyo mabuti. Hindi ho Rolex ang nakalagay. Rorex. Tinignan mo, Rorex nga. Tapos sabi niya, Sir, 300 pesos lang ho yan. <laughs> Naisahan ka. You went home frustrated. Tapos sinabi mo sa misis mo, nanaloko ka. Alam mo, sabi ng misis mo, hindi mo ba napansin na niloloko ka na? Swindler yon Hindi mo napansin. Alam mo, sagot mo, ah, but Jesus said, do not judge. So I didn't judge. Tapos pinilit mo pa yung asawa mo kasi sabi ni, ni Brother James, do not judge. Sabi ni Brother Velden, do not judge. Tapos yung misis mo nagkamot. At sabi ng misis mo, ikaw kasi hindi mo tinatapos yung talk sa feast. Sabi ni Brother Arun, love people, yes, but love them with prudence. You know, loving a crook means helping him stop his crookedness. Let me be honest with you because we follow Jesus. Alam nyo, dahil sumusunod tayo kay, kay Lord, our chances of getting hurt and harmed by those who do bad things is so much more compared to those who live self-oriented lives because we care for people. We love people. We want to help them. That is why the risk is intrinsic to our calling. Remember, Jesus died on the cross and He calls us to die for others as well. But, but, we don't have to be careless about it. We don't. Let me end with one last story. This happened to Celia. Hindi po niya tunay na pangalan. Celia got pregnant out of wedlock and her boyfriend abandoned her. You know, at that time, Celia was a lost soul. She was far from God. Actually, he hated God. He didn't even care if God exists or not. But something in her drove her to search for God. Tapos nalaman niya, merong prayer meeting dyan sa chapel na yan, malapit sa kanya. Tapos sabi niya, parang gusto kong pumunta. Tapos pumunta siya sa gabi. Sumilip lang siya. Pag silip niya dun sa labas, winelcome siya ng isang babae. Tapos sabi sa kanya, Welcome! Uy, buntis ka! Nasa na ang mister mo? Nako, ito na. Celia braced herself for rejection. Sabi niya, nako, huhusgahan na ako ng mga taong ito. Bakit? Religious people to eh. Pero kailangan niya sabihin ng totoo. Sabi ni Celia, <laughs> wala po akong asawa. Iniwan po ako ng boyfriend ko. But to her surprise, the rejection did not come. You know, the woman who welcomed her, hugged her and said, We welcome you and your baby. Tapos pinapasok na siya. Tapos pagdating niya doon, napansin niya, Nakaw lahat mga babae. Nakasabi niya, patay. Nagot ako nito. Tapos may lumapit sa kanya. Kinakausap siya. So kailangan niya maging honest at sinabi niya, Alam niyo po, hindi talaga ako masyado naniniwala kay Lord. Eh. Nainis pa nga ako sa kanya sa nangyari sa akin. Alam mo, sagot ng babae sa kanya, Ay, okay lang yan. Mahal ka namin. And for some reason, she kept attending that prayer meeting. And it was their kindness that drew her back. A few weeks later, they even threw a baby shower for her. Tapos isa sa mga prayer meeting, may lumapit sa kanya yung pinakamatanda. Nilapitan siya. Paglapit, siniksik sa kanya isang plastic na may mga bariya at sabing ganyan, Celia, para sa baby natin ito ha. Inipong ko yan para sa kanya. And Celia was moved. Why? Because this woman was poor. Mahirap. Alam niya, mahirap to pero nag-ipon para sa akin. And then after a few months, Celia finally gave birth. And it was a big celebration. In the prayer meeting, her baby was the baby of the prayer group. Tapos every prayer meeting, itong mga matatandang babae na to, nagpapalitan, kinakarga ang kanyang anak. Damang daman ni Celia ang pag-ibig. Kahit siya'y nagkamalit, nagkasala. And you know, many years later, Celia became a preacher. So how did an agnostic, a lost soul become one? Diba? It all started in a small prayer group of old women who showed her the kindness of God. It was a feast of forgiveness, a meal of mercy. It was a glimpse 
of the kingdom of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, we want every single of our 500 plus feasts around the world to be like that. Because the feast is not for holy people. <laughs> it's for sinners like you and me. The feast is not a museum of perfect people. The feast is a field hospital for the sick and the weak. But today and today, God is inviting you to make your very life a feast of God's love. May everyone who needs mercy receive it through you. My dear friends, be the feast and you will be very, very happy and fulfilled. Let's come to prayer. Let's open our hearts to God. Ask Him for mercy. Ask Him for His unconditional love. In the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, Lord, for loving me, even if I am sinful, even if I am... You cannot trust me, O oh God, but still, still, O oh Lord, you allow me, you use me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, I receive your love right now. Let it be overflowing in my heart. Nag-uumapaw para makaramdam ang iba ng iyong pag-ibig galing sa akin. Maraming salamat, Panginoon. Maraming salamat sa iyong pag-ibig. I receive your love right now. Brothers and sisters, receive the love of Jesus. Even if you feel like not worthy of this love, receive it. He is not judging you. He is loving you now. Receive the love of Jesus to overflowing so that you can celebrate a feast in your life. Thank you, Jesus. I receive your love and I receive your miracle today. In your name, in Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Let us continue to worship our God. Receive his peace, his grace, and his love.